Hey everybody, this is Rust from Retro Game Core. Today I have a special video for you today. We're going to increase the saturation levels on your Retroid Pocket handheld device. Now this tweak is actually pretty easy to pull off. It only takes a couple minutes to actually set up and you'll have the ability to increase the saturation levels all the way up to 200% of the original saturation if you'd like. And this tweak works on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, Retroid Pocket 3, as well as the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Now, if you see my other videos about the Retroid Pocket 3 and the 3 Plus, you know that I really love how saturated the screen already is. And I found that with those two devices in particular, when you increase the saturation up to 160%, it looks very close to an OLED panel. In fact, I'd say for most people, it'll be very hard to tell the difference between the two. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up that saturation increase tweak, and we'll also take a comparison against a real OLED display. And of course, we'll take a look at some of my favorite retro games, and you'll see how they look with this new tweak as well. And so, without any further delay, let's jump right into it. Okay, to start, I heard about this tweak first from my buddy Kay over on his Retro Gaming YouTube channel. And if you haven't been to his channel before, I would recommend checking it out. He just recently reached a thousand subscribers and I'd love for him to get a little bit more. On his channel, you're going to find a lot of great things concerning retro handhelds. In particular, I've really enjoyed watching some of his teardowns as well as his hardware mods. But he also has some great benchmarking videos and he's really savvy when it comes to Android gaming too. And so shout out to Kay for actually showing me how to make this tweak in the first place and let's show him a little bit of love as well. Now to get started, I've actually added these instructions to my Retroid Pocket Starter Guide. And so all you have to do here is follow the link in the description, go to this page here, and then find that section that says Increase Screen Saturation. From there, you're going to find some written instructions, as well as a link to a zip file that you're going to need to download. And this is that file right here, it's called Retroid Pocket Saturation. What you want to do here is just right click on it, then extract that zip file. And then from there you'll find a folder, and inside that you'll find five different shell scripts. And these are the scripts that we're going to run inside of the Retroid Pocket device in order to increase the saturation. And if you look at the file names, you'll see that they have different values assigned. So there's a 1.0 value for the stock saturation, and there's a couple others like 1.6, 1.7, and then the full maximum of 2.0. Now these are the values I recommend using for your device, but if you want to try something like 1.4 or 1.8, these are very easy to set up as well. All you'd have to do is open up this shell script with a text editor like Notepad and then change the value from 1.7 or whatever it is to 1.4 or 1.8. But I think that's a little bit outside of the scope of this video. I think the values we have right here are going to be just fine. So now let's focus on getting these files on the Retroid Pocket device so we can actually try it out. Now you have a couple different ways you could do this. One, you could just pull out the SD card, put it in your computer and then move the files over. But what we're going to do today is just plug our Retroid Pocket into a computer using a USB cable. And so as you can see here, my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is showing up on my PC. From here, I'm going to navigate into the internal shared storage and then the downloads folder, and then I'm going to move these files over to there. And really, that's it. You can unplug the device from your computer and we're ready to go. Now, one other note here is you could actually just use the web browser on your Retroid Pocket device and then go to my website and download the zip file directly from there if you'd like. And so theoretically, Theoretically, you wouldn't even need to use a computer to do this tweak. Now once we're ready to actually try it out, we'll go into the settings of our Retroid Pocket device and then scroll down until we find the handheld settings. Within here on the left menu bar, scroll down until you find Advanced, and then there'll be an option that says Run Script as Root. Now this is a really neat tool that you can run things as root within the Retroid Pocket firmware, but it will give you a warning right here talking about if you were to run some shady scripts that something bad could happen. Luckily, the saturation script that we're running today is super simple and it's not going to mess up anything else on your device. Either way, just to be safe, let's go ahead and go into our downloads folder here and we're going to run that top shell script first. This is the one that says get default saturation value. And so this is going to save off the default value of saturation on your device. For example, if we go and try to run a script again and go back into that download folder, we can see that text file right here called default saturation. That's the one we made from the previous shell file. Anyway, now that we've saved that off, we can go ahead and adjust our saturation level based on whatever we want. As a reminder, we have 1.0, 1.6, 1.7, and 2.0 to work with. Now, personally, I found that with the Retroid Pocket 3 and the 3 Plus, the 1.6 value seems to be the best. So we're going to try that one first. And again, all you have to do here is just tap on it and then select Run. It'll just take a moment to apply the settings change, and then you'll have to restart your device, and from there you'll have the new saturation levels. Now, one of the neat things about this tweak is that it's changing the saturation at a system level. And so even here, when I'm using an HDMI capture card, it actually is increasing the saturation here as well. And so, for example, here it is at 1.6 saturation, 
But then here it is at the default 1.0 level. Or if you wanted to see what it looked like at 2.0, here it is. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that the color saturation here on the output of the HDMI is going to be different than it is actually on a screen. For example, the 2.0 value of HDMI seems to be about the same as it is on 1.6 on the screen itself. And so if you bear in mind the amount of saturation we're seeing here at a 2.0 level, here's what it looks like at 1.6 on the actual screen. And yeah, I think you would agree that this 1.6 level right here is really nice and rich, and I don't think you're going to want to go any higher than this. And so long story short here in this demonstration is that yes, when you're using HDMI, the 2.0 saturation level looks the best to me, but when you're actually playing it on the main screen of the device itself, I found that for the Retroid Pocket 3 and the 3 Plus that 1.6 seems to be the best value. This will give you a 60% increase of saturation from the stock levels and makes it very, very close to being an OLED type display. Now this tweak will also work on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, but that screen is not as naturally saturated as it is on the Retroid Pocket 3 and the 3 Plus. And so I found that instead of a 1.6 value, that a 1.7 or higher is going to actually be a little bit better. And so right here in this footage, I'm actually using a 1.7 value, but I bet you could push it to 1.8 or 1.9. Now one of the big talking points about the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is that it had the exact same chipset as a different device that was available on the market. And that's this one here, the Amber Ambernic RG505. And the thing that distinguishes the Ambernic device from the Retroid one is that this one actually has an OLED panel. In fact, it has the exact same one as the original PS Vita. And I've done an entire video comparing these two devices, and I'll leave that linked in the video description below. But I did want to make a note right here that with the increased saturation, it is very hard to tell the difference between the two. In fact, when it comes to overall saturation levels, I think the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus at a 1.6 value is actually a little bit more saturated than the OLED panel on the RG505. In fact, the only main distinguishing thing between these two now is the fact that the color balance is a little bit cooler on the RG505, and as I mentioned in my comparison video, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus has a higher resolution as well, so you can get some sharper graphics out of that one too. And so I think at least now, when it comes to a comparison of these two screens, the saturation levels are about the same or even a little bit better on the RB3+. Now I did a bunch of gameplay testing after I had made these tweaks just to make sure that everything worked okay, and I found some pretty surprising results here. To start, I found that Nintendo and Super Nintendo games looked really great. They just are basically the same as you would expect, but a little bit more saturated. But I did find that some other systems, like the Sega Genesis, which usually has a little bit more muted colors, looks really vibrant when you have this tweak. On. And I found the same thing to be true with the Game Boy Advance. Now with the original LCD panel of this system in particular, it wasn't very colorful anyway. And so increasing the saturation like this is kind of really a sight to behold. I also found that this increased saturation really made some other games pop, like for example with arcade games and Nintendo 64 games like Super Mario here. I also found that systems that are naturally widescreen or support widescreen hacks like the Dreamcast look really good too. In fact, I think I mentioned it in my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus video, but this is one of my favorite ways to play PSP, and with this increased saturation, it looks even better now. And so really, at the end of the day, this tweak doesn't change anything when it comes to gameplay or performance with the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. But if you already own one of these devices, I think that adding this little tweak here will make you enjoy it even more. Or I think if you were on the fence about whether or not to pick one of these up, this might be a little bit compelling to learn as well. Anyway, that's really about it for this video. I don't want to belabor the point too much, but I found that after making this one small tweak, which only takes a couple minutes to actually do, I found myself enjoying my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus even more than I did already. And considering the fact that this is one of my favorite devices of 2022, that says a lot. Either way, I'd love to hear what you think about this increased saturation tweak on your Retroid Pocket device. So let me know in the comments below if you tried it out and what you think about the results. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.